In a town there was a family named Lin, and the family was quite wealthy. Louis worked as an official in his early years, but was later dismissed, and returned to his hometown because of a wrong case. When Louis was still an official, his wife took a lot of medicine, but did not have children. Not long after he returned to his hometown, Amai gave birth to a daughter. At that time Louis was 50 years old and Amai was 43 years old. Louis regarded his daughter as a treasure and named it Nicola. Because Nicola was an only daughter, Louis doted on her very much. However, Nicola, unlike most girls, was an extrovert and didn't like girly things, except for the thrilling activities of horseback riding and archery. Louis asked a friend of his who studied martial arts to teach his daughter martial arts. His daughter learned fast and worked hard. By the age of 12 or 13, she could beat a few adults. Am I thought it was bad that Nicola didn't like to read? So she was anxious. She said all day that Nicola would not be able to marry in the future. But Louis didn't think so. He said that their family was rich, and that even if Nicola didn't get married, they could always take care of her and told Am I not to worry. Nicola was so proud of her father's permission that she went out to play. Nicola liked to go out to play and was very forthright. If she encountered bad people who wanted to bully her, she could use a whip to deal with them. She was quite famous in Lushru, as long as they saw her, others would automatically stay away. One day Nicola rode to the market in the east of the city. On the first and fifteenth day of every month, there would be vendors selling all kinds of rare things, such as agate and pearls. Suddenly she saw an iron cage in front of a hunter. The iron cage was rusted and contained a small tiger. The little tiger looked sluggish, very thin and looked sick. Nicola couldn't help sympathizing with it, and asked the hunter where the tiger came from. The hunter knew Nicola, he knew she was rich, so he said that he caught the tiger on the mountain, and asked her if she would buy it. Nicola asked him how much it was, the hunter said he wanted 20 silver dollars. Nicola couldn't help frowning, although her family was wealthy, 20 silver dollars was very expensive for her. Louis usually gave her little pocket money, and she liked shopping, so she only had five silver dollars at that time. Nicola asked the hunter if it could be cheaper, and the hunter said no. Nicola hesitated before leaving. Although she sympathized with the tiger, if she went home and asked her father for money, she would inevitably be reprimanded by her mother, just as she turned to leave. The tiger in the cage croaked. Nicola looked back and saw that the little tiger had opened its eyes, and its eyes were full of hope. Nicola couldn't bear it, so she asked her companion to go back and ask her father for money. And if her father asked, tell him it was urgent, but couldn't tell him they needed money to buy a tiger. Her companion answered and went back. At home, Louis and Amai were painting in the study. Her friend told Louis that Nicola had seen something at the market and wanted 20 silver dollars to buy it. When Amai heard it, she scolded Nicola and said that she would not do good deeds. She asked this companion to bring her home quickly. Louis stroked his beard, laughed that it wasn't big money, and told his wife not to get mad. Louis asked her friend to go to the cashier to get the money. There was nothing Amai could do to stop him. She could only vent her anger at Louis. Louis hurriedly coaxed her, saying that his daughter liked it very much and that he would be happy if he could buy it. Louis managed to coax Amai, and Nicola had taken the tiger home. This little tiger was very thin. Nicola was afraid that it would eat too much at once, so she asked the chef to cut the meat into minced meat, and then slowly feed it to the little tiger. The little tiger gradually recovered, and it was very smart. Both Nicola and Louis loved it, but Amai hated it and always had to take a detour every time she saw it. After half a year, this little tiger grew into a big tiger. As its size increased, its food intake also increased, and it had to eat at least 30 pounds of meat every day. 
and I was quite dissatisfied with this pet that only spent money and pushed Louis all day to send it away. Coincidentally, Amai was pregnant. Although Nicola was reluctant to part with the tiger, she knew that the mountains and forests were its home. She sent the tiger to the dense forest west of the city on a fine day. It was all done in secret because she feared that someone would come to trouble her after being injured by the tiger. When someone asked her where the tiger had gone, she said it died of illness. Before long, her mother gave birth to a boy. Having a son at that age, Louis was very happy. He named the boy Limbero, and he wasn't as nice to Nicola as he used to be. Nicola liked her brother very much, because it meant that she didn't have to rush to find a husband to join their family. When Limbero was five years old, Louis found a fiancé for Nicola. Her fiancé was from Huishing, and his family had been in business for generations and matched the Lin family. Nicola had never met her fiancé, only knew that his name was Guen Chang. He was a year older than Nicola and had read a lot. Nicola knew that her parents' arrangement could not be defied, so instead of feeling dissatisfied, she was happy to be able to marry away. She felt that by marrying to Hisu, she could stay away from her mother's nagging and discipline. Soon came the day of marriage, and Louis prepared a dowry of 18 cages for Nicola. There were 36 people who sent her to marry. In addition to her relatives, there was also the most famous matchmaker in Lushru. It took six days from Lushru to Hisu. They had a lot of people, so it was easy to get people's attention. At that time, there was a group of bandits who often hid in the forest and specialized in robbery. This group of bandits had been eyeing Nicola since they left Lushu and waiting for the right opportunity to act. On the fifth day, they entered a particularly large pine forest. The pine trees there were tall and sturdy. They felt a chill in the woods because the canopy was too high to block the sun. When they came to the middle of the woods, the matchmaker who led the way got out of the car and said that she was too tired and asked everyone to take a rest. Nicola couldn't help but was about to lift off the car to take a breath when she heard a whistle. Then out of the jungle came a dozen or so masked robbers. The leading robbers asked them to hand over the dowry quickly, otherwise they would all die. Nicola looked at the people, thinking that although she knew some kung fu, she couldn't escape because she couldn't match them. They were frightened and hurriedly carried things over. The robber was very satisfied when he opened the box and saw the dowry, but the robber said everyone but the bride could go. They heard that the bride was beautiful, so he wanted her to be his wife. Nicola was angry and scared, but the people who sent her didn't care about her, Except for her friends, everyone else ran away. When the bandit walked to the wedding car and opened the door with a smile, a tiger roar suddenly sounded and a cold wind blew in the forest. The bandit took a step back and told his accomplice that there were tigers here. Nicola was also nervous when she heard that tigers were ferocious beasts. Although there were capable people who killed tigers before, they were very few. Nicola grabbed her skirt nervously. In addition to hearing a messy footsteps, then screaming one after another. After a while, there was no sound. Nicola stepped out of the sedan chair. She lifted her hijab and saw that the bandits were already lying on the ground. They suffered injuries to their legs or bodies, but not fatal. At this time, a big tiger jumped in front of Nicola lightly, and it stretched out its head and rubbed Nicola's shoulder affectionately. It was only then that Nicola recognized that it was the little tiger she had released five years ago. Apparently to save her, Nicola patted its head. The tiger fell down and seemed to be going down the mountain with Nicola on its back. Nicola mounted it, and her friends, who were still scared, followed the tiger slowly out of the jungle. They were led by the tiger and arrived in Hisu two hours later, saving a lot of time. The tiger did not enter the city, but stopped by the woods. Nicola stroked its head, then took her friend into the city to find the Gur family. Nicola didn't say anything about how she was rescued by the tiger. She just said that she knew martial arts, 
so she broke through the siege and escaped with the maids. As soon as the Gurr family heard it, they quickly called the police, and soon the police arrested all the robbers who were injured and lying in the jungle. Nicola's dowry was delivered to the Gurr family, and she married Guan Chang as scheduled. Originally, she thought that Guan Chang was a scholar, and he must be very boring, but she didn't expect that he also liked martial arts and was very kind. It was precisely because he heard that there was a girl in Lushru who had practiced martial arts since she was a child and had a free and easy personality. So he tried to find a way to ask a matchmaker to propose a marriage, which made their beautiful marriage possible. Nicola and Guan Chang had similar interests and got along very harmoniously. Later, they had three sons and one daughter, and they were very loving and harmonious. Nicola is a kind, brave and forthright girl. It is precisely because of her kind deeds that she was rewarded by this tiger. In fact, animals are also very intelligent and emotional. In real life, humans will domesticate tigers, lions and other beasts as pets. One good turn deserves another. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting stories.